All right. Welcome on in, everyone. Welcome to our Increase Recurring Giving at Your Church. Um, we're happy you guys are here, and welcome to Generosity Month, a month where Tithely focuses on increasing generosity at churches, just like the ones that you all lead. Um, and so excited to dive in a little bit more today on how to increase recurring giving at your church, some stats and some things that we have found through a dive of the data of our customers. And um, so, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll talk all into the detail about that as we go along. So as we talk about recurring giving, you may have seen on a lot of promo material today um, that we're going to have myself and Frank Berry, who is our COO here at Tithely, join us. Uh, but as you can see, we don't have Frank Berry here, unfortunately. We have the amazing Bethany Langston. Frank had something come up and was not able to join us, but that's all right. Uh, we are in more than capable hands because we have Bethany Langston here, who is one of our um, success team leads. We'll go into intros here in just a second, but um, we definitely thank Bethany for the last minute being able to join us. All righty. Um, so let's um, look a little bit about who our customer experience team is. Yeah, so I would love to share this with you guys. Mark and I are both part of the customer experience team here at Tithely, so we love getting to work closely with customers just like you um, as you are getting started and as you're continuing along your journey with Tithely. So this is just a little bit of an introduction to our team um, within customer experience. So we strive to be customer centric and keep the customer at the focus of everything we do, um, whether that's our processes or our communication or just really our mindset. Um, we strive to be innovative. Um, as you guys know, our Tidely products are extremely innovative and really um, cutting edge. And we strive to do the same in our approach to the customer experience. and want to make sure that that is um, amazing for everyone who works with Tidely. Um, we're transparent. So we want to be really clear with you guys about um, about our products and about our um, you know values and just everything that's going on with your account and just want to make sure that you get the most value out of um, working with Tidely as possible. Um, we're solution motivated. So um, being in customer experience, like I said, we get to work really closely with customers. And sometimes that means um, answering questions, um, whether that's our support team or our success team or our onboarding team, um, whoever that may be. Um, so we really strive not to just answer your questions, but to really provide you full solutions that are going to partner with you and your overall ministry goals, um, which kind of leads me into that last point of partnered and invested in your success. I feel like this really sums all of them up. Um, but we just have such a heart for the local church here at Tithely, and it's my great joy to work here to get to come alongside you guys who are doing ministry work. Um, and so just know that like our team takes that very seriously, and we know that like your guys's um, goals really expand so much further than just your use of Tidely products. And we want to be able to partner with you in using those products to achieve, you know, that bigger, um, those bigger picture goals that you guys have um, within your ministry. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I love that. Um, I love just hearing a little bit about who our team is. Um, we always like to start these webinars with you guys seeing um, a little bit more about who we are. So, you know, who's on the other side of that computer screen and the other side of that phone call. Um, and just know that we are here standing beside you in your um, pursuit of ministry. So uh, this is our team. Like I said, we have Bethany on our team. Uh, she is a success team lead here at Tithely. Um, You've heard from Bethany uh, just once, but Bethany, let us know where in the world are you calling in from? Yeah, so I am in Knoxville, Tennessee. It is also probably too warm here for Christmas decorations, if I'm being honest. But yeah, I'm from <laughs> Knoxville, Tennessee, and I am, yeah, I've been with Tithely for, I guess, close to five years now, which is kind of crazy. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and my name is Mark. I manage our customer success team here at Tithely. I am located in Kentucky, um, far western corner of Kentucky, and um, it is also back to summertime here. It is warm um, and got shorts on today just because, um, you know, got to gotta live it while you can, right? So um, yeah, welcome everyone. This is a little introduction to our team. So um, before we really jump in, um, I want to mention that some of you may have seen on our Generosity Month um, on our generositymonth.com and all of our promos about Generosity Month that we're doing some major giveaways for um, Generosity Month. Um, those giveaways are done at the end of every week and they're done on Facebook. 
Um, so they will not be called today, but because you have come to the webinar today, and if you remain at the webinar um, through the end of our call, you will actually get three extra entries into the webinar. So you have whatever, tripled your chances of um, winning the amazing prizes. I think this week we're giving away some, Air I think it's AirPods and um, Amazon gift cards and things like that. So thanks so much for taking time to join us. Uh, you've tripled your chances today. Um, and you get the opportunity to learn a little bit more about how to leverage um, the power of recurring giving. But before we directly jump into all of that, I wanted to kind of throw up this product slide for you. This is all the different products that we offer here at Tithely. You may be just using one of these, um, or maybe you're using a couple of them, but um, what I consistently hear when communicating with customers is that there's not much awareness of all the different things that Tithely offers and can do, right? So maybe you're just using Giving, um, or maybe you're just using Breeze, or maybe you know, you're know you just using Elvanto. Um, I just wanted to go ahead and show you that there are so many different options that can meet a lot of the needs at your local church. If there are things on here that you're like, hey, I would love to know a little bit more about sites or apps, um, please let us know. Um, and we would love to get you more information about that. You can email us at support at tithe.ly and we can get you some more information about all of those, all of these different products. All right. So um, as we jump in, I got a question for you. Um, I think Bethany is going to talk to us a little bit more about this question. Yeah, so you guys may see a poll come up on your screen. We'd love to get your input here, but we just wanted to know, would you benefit from a report um, that would let you know about the regular donors that you have at your church who don't have a recurring gift set up? So would you like to know who those people are? That way you could communicate with them. And then along with that, also have a pre-created communication plan to help convert them into recurring donors. So this is a little bit of a long sentence, kind <laughs> of a double layered question, but that is essentially what we're asking. So thank you to those of you jumping into the poll already. So again, I'll say this again, would you benefit from a report within your Tidely account of being able to know who those regular donors are that don't yet have recurring gifts set up? And then also having access to a pre-created communication plan to help convert those donors into recurring donors. And we'll talk more about some of the reasons you may want to do that, but just wanted to kind of throw this out there to you guys. Yeah, yeah it's awesome. Um, yeah, getting a ton of responses here, overwhelmingly hearing yes, that um, this would be helpful. Um, and I agree, right? Um, it's so important um, for you. Um, if you are the, the church admin, maybe you're a financial admin, maybe you work on a um, benevolence team at the church, whatever it may be, um, it's important for you to know who are those people that, you know, they're coming every Sunday, but every Sunday they're actually picking up their phone and they're giving a one-time donation. Like how can we communicate well with them to get them on to recurring giving? So I agree um, with a lot of you guys that, that it would be really good to know. And that's why today, like that's really what we're going to be diving into. These are questions we get all the time. Um, we get people asking, like, they're saying like, Hey, like I have donors who give on a regular basis. Why should I get them to set up recurring giving? Um, and I think that's a great question, right? Um, why? And um, what's the why behind it? If they're giving consistently and they're giving every Sunday, why would I even want to put them on recurring donation? Why would I want to, um, I think Bethany was talking about earlier, like, why would I want to rock the boat, right? Like everything's going well, like let it keep going. Um, so just answering the question of why, and then what are the impacts of recurring giving on a church community? So not only like for the health and the well-being of that donor, um, but also like what are the impacts of that gift on your local church? Um, so we're going to dive a little bit more today into answering some of these questions. And hopefully throughout the day today, you're going to be able to you know align some of this with the things that you do at your church and apply um, some of these pieces really well. All right, so um, we're going to dive into recurring giving and why it matters at your church. Um, so let's kick it off with um, some stats, right? So we have gone in and done a deep dive just throughout, um, I think over the last five or six years, we have collected some data and we've ran some numbers to see some giving trends, right? And to see, you know, what's the power of recurring giving, like how many people are giving on a regular basis, but not by recurring and we've, we've pulled out some high level stats, and I think this is going to help you see why it matters um, and what the power is within recurring giving and really the whole reason why we're talking about it today. 
So um, a donor who gives via recurring giving will give on average 50% more over a year versus someone who is not set up on recurring, right? So just the fact that they have that recurring giving happening and it's coming out weekly or monthly or biweekly, whatever that is, that they will give on average 50% more over the course of the year than, in, than a donor who does not have recurring give, giving set up. Another interesting stat is that 70% of regular non-recurring donors will actually decrease their donation over the course of the year. I think this stat alone really speaks really strongly to why you would want donors, even if they are giving on a regular basis um, and they're, you know, they're coming in church every Sunday, they're picking up their phone um, and they're scanning that QR code and they're giving online. That's, that's great. But actually, statistically, we are seeing that 70% of these regular non-recurring donors will actually decrease their donation over the course of the year. Um, so one of the leading reasons why we would encourage each of you to get people on to recurring giving at your church. Yeah, and of course, with this being said, that if the same donor has recurring giving set up, that amount will remain the same, right? We will see that stat be removed and the donor will remain consistent. We also see that only 4% of donors will remain the same or increase their donation without it being recurring. Um, that only 4% of donors will remain the same or actually increase their donation without it being recurring. And um, so it, just the fact here again, right, that if someone does not have it set up on recurring, it's going to decrease, they're not gonna bring it higher, um, it'll actually just remain the same. Um, it will not remain the same or increase. <laughs> and here, this may go without saying, um, but the average gift size of a recurring donation is smaller. Um, you may start running some numbers and you're like, hey, the actually the average gift of our recurring donations is a hundred bucks. But, um, and you may see like the non-recurring ones are a thousand dollars. But yearly totals um, are double that of non-recurring gifts on average. Um, that, you, that recurring gifts double the total of non-recurring -recur gifts just because they're on a recurring schedule. So while they may be smaller donations, um, individual donations, they total something much larger because they're giving on a, given on a regular cadence. And so um, when you start looking at some of those numbers, just know that there is still power in this recurring giving just because it's given on a regular basis. So I think these are some really interesting numbers, right? And um, this really brings us to statistically, right? If you're if you're one of the people that really likes quantitative data, right? This kind of brings us to, oh, like it makes sense that someone would want to be on recurring giving, why a church would want their donor set up on recurring giving for all of these reasons. All right, I'll hand it over to Bethany and she'll talk a little bit more about why it matters that recurring giving is set up with your church. Yeah, so um, this is a little bit more on the um, church administrative side um, for most of these. So what we see when a church has strong recurring givers is increased consistency, um, which allows you as the church staff or um, church leaders to have predictable finances and allow you to just plan better um, over the course of the year. So it lets you know what's coming into your budget. If you can look at your list of recurring donors, you can know when those gifts are going to hit, when they're going to be coming through. Um, it also lets you really enhance that commitment and ownership um, within your church um, body and within your donors. So fostering that strength of the church community and um, allowing people who give on a regular basis um, just to be more connected to your community. And really, I kind of love being able to just pause here. We'll kind of touch on pieces of this a little bit later too. But one thing that I feel like my church has done really well is talking about giving really consistently on Sunday mornings, right? My church uses Tithely. Um, it's amazing. We love it. Um, and, you know, every Sunday during the hosting time, our host will say, you know, here are the ways you can give. You can scan the QR code. You can still give with a check if you choose. You can use the app, whatever the case may be. Um, but really taking it a step further and having that be a moment to then talk about what it means to be an engaged partner with a recurring gift really just will mm -hmm. drive that home even further to those donors who kind of want to use that as a next step, right? Like my church talks about giving in general as a next step, right? Being able to take that step of 
faithfulness and obedience, um, you could take that a step further by setting up a recurring gift. Um, so I just love being able to foster that strength there as a church community. Still on the administrative side, it lets you streamline your operations. Um, so for your bookkeepers, having those regular donations coming in, it's just going to make your bookkeeping easier. Like Mark said, it's going to be a little bit smoother to have this, um, these gifts coming in over a steady stream rather than a thousand dollars here and four thousand dollars here, maybe five hundred here. But if you have that regular cadence, it just makes your bookkeeping and administrative side a little bit smoother for you. Next, it's going to increase engagement through technology. I love the thought of this. Um, so your church members are going to be online with you um, when they go in to make their recurring gift. So whether you're driving them to your tightly giving form um, with a QR code or whether you're driving them to your giving page on your website where they can set that up, or maybe it's your church app, um, your church members are getting to your online presence and you can now open them up to more content online. Um, so if you have, you know, sermon notes on your app, that's going to let them see that and be like, oh yeah, I should be using this app more. Or I didn't realize I can see my past gifts here. This is really helpful for me. It's just going to open them up to have really some hands-on experience within your digital presence as a church in whatever that may look like for you, even if it's just your giving form. Um, and then we're going to talk about how it enhances your financial transparency and trust. I feel like um, even opening the conversation of recurring giving sometimes allows you to open this conversation with your donors and with your church members um, and just communicate a little bit more about the mission of your church, what those recurring gifts are going towards, why it's important and helpful for your donors to give and to give on a recurring basis. Um, and it lets your church community not only feel a part of that, but just have enhanced trust in where their recurring gift is going and, you know, why that is important, um, not only for them and their own, you know, faith, uh, journey, but for your church body as a whole. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I, I love some of these points because it kind of hits on outside of statistically why you should, or financially why you should get people on recurring is that it really brings a lot of cultural impact to your church. Um, like Bethany said, like fostering those strong communities, um, engaging your, um, church members through technology, creating commitment to your mission, increasing transparency. I, I so agree with all of this. Um, and just the predictable finances as well. Um, you know, I, I've spoken with so many churches um, that run so strongly on like how to set up their budget by how many recurring gifts they have set up, right? So if you are a donor to your church or you're just an admin, right, this is really important because it's increasing the ability for your church um, and what they can plan for and go out and do in the community throughout the course of the year. So these are some really great, great um, points on why you should use recurring giving. So um, before we uh, pivot over to this, um, what, how, you know, how do you best communicate? Um, Kathleen uh, sent, in, uh, sent in a question, which I thought was really good. Um, she said, say, I have, a, I have a church member that's giving a gift every week, but they're not showing up on the recurring giving side of Tithely. Um, and that's a really good call out, right? So that would mean that they actually don't have a recurring gift set up, that more than likely what they're doing is they're coming in every Sunday and actually giving that one-time gift. And these are the people that we're talking about, right? These are the people that um, come in every Sunday. They're like, hey, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I don't want to set up the recurring giving, but I'm actually want to commit my gift every Sunday, which that is amazing. And, you know, we praise God for that. Uh, but um, those are the people of this statistically why we should kind of get them on to recurring giving. So now we'll, we'll kind of talk about how to communicate that. How do we communicate to a church member um, that they should set up recurring giving and the power of recurring giving? Um, so it's one thing to know that church members should do it. And it's another thing to actually communicate it right. Um, because sometimes talking about finances at church is very difficult. Um, and it's a, you know, kind of an icy topic and we um, want to make sure and navigate it well. So let's talk about some practical steps on how to speak about recurring giving at your church. And so this is really taken from real world examples that we have seen churches do, right? Um, so, so often I could not tell you how many times I've spoken with a church and I, you know, I'm like, Hey, like, uh, you've got to be talking about giving, right? Get up on stage, talk about it. And they're like, 
oh no 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 like we don't do that like that that that's against our culture and we just don't really do that and so I want to talk about why you should be and in some practical steps on how you can be talking about it um, because I think there, there is such power in it for your church community. I would say as you do this, the number one thing that I see as successful with church members and in talking about giving at church is speak through stories. Um, I love um, when I go to church and I see a testimony or a story, maybe it's a person that walks up on stage and they're like, hey, like your church has given and helped me pay my electric bill or they help me keep, you know, keep our water running um, just because of the generosity and the love of your church. Maybe they're from a mission field that you are supporting. Maybe it's a video. Maybe it's a video of the mission work that you guys are supporting. I mean, just showing it at your church. I would encourage you to speak through stories because stories are just speak such volume to your church. Along with that, just speak impact. How is this money that is being given regularly, regularly impacting the work of your church? If you never speak impact and maybe one time a year, you're like, hey, like we had to spend $20,000 to put in a new heating unit, but that's all the budget updates you get. Your, you know, your donors are going to be like, oh, I gave all year long. And that's the only thing I know that my money went towards other than that and, and paying the pastor's salary. Right. And so that's what puts a little bit of a sour taste in someone's mouth about wanting to give to their local church. And so I would really urge you to actually speak more consistently about it because it will start to change the tune um, and change the culture at your church because you start speaking impact and you start speaking in real volumes about the things that your church is actually able to do um, with the money that is given from your donors. The next thing I would do, I would say, is to thank your donors constantly. Um, I don't know how many churches I've spoken with where they've never sent out a thank you letter. Um, they've never really stood on stage. Um, and aside from the giving moment, just saying, well, thanks for giving today and moving on to the announcements, um, that they're not actually taking time and thanking donors. Um, I think specifically, like I have a, a letter here um, from our church where they sent along a thank you and a handwritten note of saying, hey, thanks. You, thank you so much for giving this giving. This is what you have given to this past year. That was that's so impactful, right? I'm um, just getting a handwritten letter um, and just hearing like, oh, they actually really appreciate my gift. Um, and that encourages the donor to keep going and keep maybe even increasing their gift this season. The next thing I would say is don't be scared to ask your donors. Um, don't be scared to ask your donors to change to recurring giving because when a donor knows the impact of their donation, they are more that often than not happy to adjust in a way that will help the local church more. When they know the impact, when they know the value within that gift, donors are more often than not like, yeah, like absolutely. I would go ahead and do that. Let me turn it on recurring so it can be there consistently so that when my family goes to the beach this summer and, and we're not at church on Sunday, that that gift will keep giving because I believe in the mission of the church and what they're doing. And essentially at the end, I would just say, whoop, Sorry, to just talk about it. Um, just don't don't be scared to talk about it at your church. Um, I don't know how many people just are just like I said, just don't talk about it at all. And so um, I would just urge you that um, to fight against the idea that you're asking for a handout at your church because that is not true. I I don't think that is something that the local church does. I think that the local church. Um, depend, you know, falls back on the idea that Christian life calls us to a posture of generosity. And then we, when we have been placed in a posture of generosity, an outflowing of giving and a, and a generous heart is going to come, come through that. And so when we talk consistently about generosity, we are encouraging our church members to um, join with us um, in, in creating a posture of generosity and giving together. Um, and, and people are encouraged and, and want to set up recurring gifts, give one-time donations, and just um, participate in the mission of your church. That's so, so um, true. yeah, no, please, <laughs> Bethany, go ahead. <laughs> no, that's so true. I just, I love what Mark shared with all of that. And I just, as Mark was talking, I just couldn't help think of like some of the stories that I'm so thankful I've gotten to hear from my church, mm -hmm. whether that's been like from our entire church, all hearing the story together that somebody shared, or just like in my small group or with one of my friends about the impact that giving has made on them, whether that was like, they were blessed in some way by, you know, something that our church did with 
um, the money that it had from giving, or if that was, you know, their own like faith growing through that act of generosity and, um, you know, just faithful trust in giving. So I just, I love all of that. And I love that, um, that is, you know, been able to shape my view of generosity as well. And so, man, that's just such a gift that I keep with me. So I'm so thankful mm-hmm. for that. Yeah. Um, but with that, I would love to share with you guys a little bit about how Tithely partners with churches to help increase recurring giving. So we've talked about, you know, why recurring giving matters, why it can, you know, help your church in different ways, why it can help your donors. Um, so how are we going to help you harness this um, power of recurring giving. Um, So some of the things that we've done are really focused on making it easy for your donors to set up recurring giving. Um, If you guys have been with Tithely for any amount of time, hopefully you've seen how easy it is for a donor to give in general on Tithely. And it is just as easy to set up a recurring gift, if not easier, because they're only doing it once. Um, So To take that even a step further, you also, as an admin in Tidely, have an option to turn on recurring giving by default on your giving form. So if your church decides that this is just the step you want to take together as a body, man, I would love that. And we are just going to make that super easy for you. You can communicate with your church like, hey, when you give, it is already going to be set up for recurring. You can just choose your schedule, choose your amount and go from there. um, And your donors can just really run with that. Um, They'll still have the option to uncheck that if they want to, but that just kind of puts that, um, you know, it's taking care of as much of it as we can for them. Um, the other thing that we're going to um, partner with you guys for is a user-friendly interface. So again, if you guys have been using Kindly, if you've been around, um, you've seen that for the donor's perspective, it's a really straightforward setup process. Your congregants can really easily initiate that recurring giving schedule that suits them. So when they get to the giving form, again, it's really just about one extra step. And I've I hesitate to even call it a step because it's really just a couple check boxes of choosing their schedule for that amount that they're choosing to give um, that suits them. So it's really flexible um, as far as what that schedule is going to be. So my husband and I give monthly um, that works really well with our budgeting, um, but I know other people prefer to give weekly. Um, and so whatever works best for your donors, they're able to do. Um Along with that, there are multiple payment options. Um, So as you guys may know, Tidely does accommodate multiple forms of payments, whether that is credit or debit cards or ACH. So that just gives your donor a little bit more um, flexibility. And with the security that we've really um, focused on and like spent tons of resources and all of that to make sure that your donor's gifts are safe and secure. So um, it just lets your donors know that they're giving in a way for one that's easy to them, just like they would any other online transaction. Um, But knowing that that's safe and secure and going straight to your church the way that it should. Next, we've got transparency and reporting. So um, this is going to be for you on the admin side. You're going to be able to get real-time analytics and reports to make it easier for your administrators to track donations and plan accordingly. One of my favorite ways to do this is with within your Tidely Giving dashboard. There's a widget there where you can see the percentage of your donors that are recurring. I love that. It's a really great at-a-glance way to see um, how how that recurring um progress is affecting your church. Um, And then you can also see your full list of recurring donors, um, when their gifts are, what the schedule is, um, just so that, again, like we've talked about earlier, that's going to partner with you in your overall planning um, financially. And then one thing that we have for you guys is your Tithely Giving launch slides. Um, I'll kind of talk about the templates and guides along with that. This is all kind of part of our launch kit. Um, So we have some resources that we'll share with you um, here in just a second where you can um, edit these resources. They are all beautiful. Our team has done so much work to make these really customizable for you guys. You can add your own logos, brand colors, wording, all of that stuff, but everything is ready to go for you um, so that your donors can easily give to your church. You can put those slides up during your services or um, use some of these other resources in your print materials. You can use an email template that we have ready to go for you to communicate with your donors about recurring giving. Um, So we have really done our best to take some of the hard work off of your guys' plate and allow you to just 
do the, you know, what is going to work best for your church and actually implement um, recurring giving the way that's going to work for you guys. <laughs> Awesome. Um, and yeah, so well said, Bethany. Thank you so much. Um, Tithely has really worked hard um, to participate in a generous, um, encouraging churches to pursue a generous life um, with their donors. And so, um, yeah, increasing, you know, reducing some of those barriers, just like Bethany was saying, providing you guys with resources. So these are a couple of those resources. Um, on the left side of your screen, you'll see a Tithely launch kit. Um, down inside there, there are templates on how to communicate with your donors. Maybe this is, these are just like um, email templates, SMS templates, social media templates. There's along with that, there is actually also some um, slides that we've pre-created for you. They're beautiful. We've had a graphic designer make those. And so, you know, grab those. Those are completely free to use. Scan that QR code on the left. And then on the right, um, there is a how to grow recurring giving at your church. This is a free ebook um, that our team has written. Um, this is going to talk about some things that we have spoken about today, but go into a little bit more depth on it. Um, so it's a free ebook that we have um, created. So if you would like to download that, scan that QR code and um, grab that free ebook on how to grow recurring giving at your church. So I'll leave these up here um, for just another couple moments. Um, these are some of the ways that Tithely has worked to partner with local churches, just like you, to increase recurring giving at your church. All righty. Um, again, we are actually, this is being recorded, and so we will shoot you an email for this um, when this is over. So if you don't get a chance to grab these now, um, don't worry, We you will get those in the call following. So um, I want to spend a couple moments now to address a couple questions that came across. And so uh, there are a couple questions that came in. I'm going to talk about those. And then if you guys have any questions that may have um, arose um, while you were hearing us speak, please drop those in the Q&A box. We'll be more than happy to answer those. Um, so one question was asked here is, who's the best person at your church to talk about um, giving during worship? It's a great question, right? Um, and this is one that I've seen from a variety of different perspectives, right? Um, maybe this is um, someone who is focused on benevolence at your church and understands the heart of um, giving at your church and, and has a finger on the pulse, right? Um, where I see the largest impact um, is the person that, the, the face that your church recognizes the most, and maybe the person whose their voice is the most powerful in the room. Um, and you probably knew who that is at your church, right? Um, maybe that is the senior pastor. Maybe that is, I don't know, um, the executive pastor, maybe that's the person who MCs at the beginning um, and kind of keeps the service going, what, whatever it may be. It, it's going to look different at every church. Um, I would say it just needs to be someone that brings value um, and um, trust to your church body and that people really look towards for um, communication and commitment. Um, so it's different for every church, but that's a really great question. The next thing I have here is, is it possible to allow donors to select their own dates um, versus like the first and the 15th. Um, so it's a, it's a great question. So um, yeah, uh, with doing like a bi-weekly gift, um, we aren't able to set like a difference. Maybe say you want to do like the third and the 18th. Um, we're not able to, it would have to be the first and the 15th. Um, but what you could do is you could just encourage the donor to set up two recurring gifts. So they could set up a monthly gift on the 6th and a monthly gift on the 24th. Um, and that that could give on a um, bi monthly basis. Is that correct, Bethany? Or we have, we're changing these settings all the time. So I always have to make sure that we haven't changed that and made it better. Yeah, no, that's correct for now. Okay. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Um, but great question. Great question. I know, I know some people are like, Hey, that doesn't work in my paycheck. Um, and that's totally fine. Um, but that is currently how it has to be set up. Um, okay. Those are some great questions. Um, so thanks so much for putting them in. If again, if you have any other questions, Click that Q and A box and let us know, and we'll try to we'll try to hit those um, before we leave today. So a few last, um, just a few last announcements. Um, so if you have other questions after we finish the call today, please email us at support at tithe.ly, and we'll be more than happy to help you out there. Again, um, that is support at tithe.ly, just like you see it on the screen. Let us know if you have any other questions. And as I mentioned early, we earlier, we will be sending you a recap email of this call um, with some action steps and um, reminders to sign up for some giveaways, but then also um, how, um, and a recording of the today's call if you would like to review it at a later date. 
So giveaways, um, something that really perks everyone's ears, right? Um, like I said earlier, um, every Friday on Facebook, um, Sharin, who is our CX director, and myself get on Facebook and we let you guys know um, a little timely tip from our team, uh, but then also who the winners are of the, um, the prizes. And so this Friday, we will have a post go out telling everyone who the winners are. Like I said at the beginning, because you have come in today, and you have uh, watched the webinar with us live, you are actually getting three extra entries. And so thank you so much for joining us and best of luck in winning the giveaways. Join our Facebook group. So you will see um, this is actually where um, we will announce the winners. And so facebook.com slash group slash Tithely. Um, it says Tithely official group, um, just because we've had a couple of dupes out there we want to <laughs> try to fight back against. Uh, but those are, that's our Facebook group. Uh, please come and join us there. Um, our next um, webinar is next Wednesday at noon um, CST. I believe it's next Wednesday. Now, now I'm doubting it. Nope, it's, it's next Thursday. It's the 16th. That is my bad. I'm pretty sure it's Thursday the 16th. You'll get a webinar. You'll get an email about it. It'll tell you um, at generositymonth.com. It's also um, going to come in the email, but um, join us. You can scan that QR code. It'll take you to the correct date. Um, don't trust me. Trust the webinar link. Um, and uh, yeah, join us. Join us there. If you're wanting more training, if you want um, some online training, you can go to university.tithe.ly. There is a ton of free resources there um, that you are more than welcome to take advantage of. And so jump on in there, university.tithe.ly. There's all kinds of webinars on how to do everything within Tithely. So go in there and get this all free to you. And then if you're like, hey, I would actually love someone from the Tithely team to come to my church and walk us through how to do things, maybe set up the account, whatever that is, you can go to get.tithe.ly slash onsite training, and you can um, receive a quote from our team on coming to your church and uh, partnering with you there. All right. Before we wrap up and say thank you, um, I think we had one more question come in. Is that right, Bethany? Yeah, I saw one more. And if you guys have others, please feel free to keep throwing them in there. Um, but I saw that Sydney or Cindy, I'm so sorry, um, asked about how that recurring giving message could be communicated if you're doing it every week on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. um, so again, like Mark said earlier, this can really adapt to any church. Um, but for my church, we are kind of used to having a little bit of an announcement time. We call it our hosting time um, in between the worship songs and the sermon. Um, so just during that time, like along with the other announcements, that's I feel like typically before COVID, that's when we would pass the offering plates. We've kind of never gone back to passing the offering plates at my church. Um, we let the donors know how they can give with a check. But anyway, all that to say, um, they just kind of will share the slides just like we have on the launch kit that we shared with you guys. Um, so those will be on the screens that we have in our sanctuary and whoever's hosting, whether that is um, one of the pastors or maybe it was the person leading worship, um, they will just say like, Hey, everybody, you know, these are announcements for the week. Um, and honestly, one of my favorites is they'll share stories about giving kind of like we did, um, like Mark was mentioning earlier. So sometimes in the announcements, they'll talk about a, an event or a serve day that we had the past week. And they'll incorporate that with, you know, if you want to be able to, you know, partner with us in investing, you know, in those ways, these are the ways that you can give um, online and just having those QR codes or the link to our website and all of that. Um, and really, as far as recurring giving goes, that can just be an, an extra sentence that you add. And, you know, and if you want to take an extra step with your gift today, we would love to um, have you turn on those recurring donations. Um, if you want to talk more about that, we always let them know that they can come up to um, our team in the lobby after the service to just talk more about giving or how to set that up if they're needing help with that. But that's how we do it on a on a weekly basis here at our church. Awesome. Yeah, that that's great. Um, so great tips. Um, well, cool. Well, thank you, everyone. Thanks so much for taking some time out of your day to come and join us on this call. Um, we hope to see you on Friday um, on our Facebook group where we will announce the winners to some of our big prizes and then hope to see you next week on our next webinar where we will focus on end of year giving and prepping um, for the holiday season with Tithely. So have a great rest of your day, everyone. We'll see you soon.
Bye. Thanks, everyone.